Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add your knitting onto a dish towel so that way you can make a little hook to hang it over wherever you'd like to in your kitchen. Um, so these actually make great hostess gifts or just gifts to give around the holidays, anything like that. And the reason I don't have mine to show you here in the introduction is because I've already gifted them. Um, but if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I actually decided to make this video because I realized that most of the tutorials online were for crocheted ones instead of knitted ones. So in this video, I'll be showing you a knitted version. Um, down in the description box below, I'll be sure to link some other videos for crochet alternatives. Um, again, down in the description box, you're gonna find the different video breakpoints. So that way, if you're just looking for a certain step, you can fast forward or rewind to those different locations. And you're also gonna find links to all the materials I used in this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. The materials you need to make this hanging dish towel are starting off with the dish towel. So this one is one from Target and this one is 16 inches by 28 inches. You really can use any size you'd like. The other example I have, this dish towel is from the Dollar Tree. Then I have a tapestry needle here and depending on the fabric you're going through, you're going to need a tapestry th needle that's a little bit thinner than the typical tapestry needle you'd use for yarn. One button, so you really can use any size button you'd like. This is just one that I think looks pretty cute on them. Um, this one measures one and a half inches in diameter. If you use a different size button, you're just going to change the number of stitches you cast off. So I'll mention where to change the pattern if you're using a different size button. For the yarn, I'm using a worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. So this, one's is, this one is sugar and cream. And this is a brand you can find at a lot of different stores. I know they have it at Joann's, I think they have it at Walmart, AC Moore, a lot of different places. And this colorway is overcast. And just in case you're looking for a similar yarn, this one is weight number four, and it recommends a US 7. Then you're also gonna need a pair of scissors. And then lastly, for the knitting needle, I'm gonna be using a size US 7 knitting needle. And this is knit flat. I just knit back and forth. So you can either use a straight, a set of straight knitting needles or a circular needle. I just prefer to knit on circular ones. So that's what I'm using here. So now that I've showed you all the materials, let's get started. To start off, I just cut some of my yarn for the initial cast on, and I have about a yard and a half here, or about 54 inches. You're going to want to use more depending on how wide your towel is at the top, because basically this top edge is going to be our cast on edge. So my cast on edge is five and a half inches wide. So if you have anything smaller than that, then 54 inches will be just fine. If you have anything wider than that though, then you're gonna to wanna to add on some extra yarn. To start off, I'm gonna tie a knot at one end of my yarn. So I'm just gonna leave about, um, probably about eight inches. And then I'm just gonna tie, tie a knot, probably two knots actually, just to make sure it stays in place. Okay, so there's my knot. And now I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle through the other end of my yarn. And because the yarn is so long, I'll probably double it for quite a bit. Now up here at the top, I've actually found it's very helpful to just start this edge exactly the way the towel is sold in the store. So if I leave on the tags and everything, I actually find it's helpful because it holds the towel in place. So for example, in my other towel that I made, this one was basically like attached. It had one of those plastic things holding it all together at the bottom, but it was laid out exactly like this. And then I left the plastic on, did the whole cast on and knit the whole thing. And then the last thing I did when I was weaving in my ends is cut the towel open. So again, for this one, I'm gonna leave this plastic tag on here as I cast on across, because I like the way the towel is laid out right now. Of course, if you wanna switch up the way the towel is laid out, feel free to cut it open and, or cut off the plastic and rearrange the towel. But to start off, 
The first thing I'm gonna decide is how far down I want this edge to be. So over on this one, I have probably about a third of an inch that I went down. So I'm gonna do something similar on the second one because I do like the way this looks. So I'm gonna go somewhere between a third and half an in of an inch down on the one side. So I'm gonna start in the center and then come out. And you do wanna start off fairly close to the edge. Now I'm just gonna take that end and I'm gonna tuck it into my work so that I don't get confused with that one later on. And now the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go over to the back of my work and now I wanna go in just about the same place, same distance down, and then come out just about the same spot on the other side. And when I pull my yarn through, I wanna make sure that it makes a loop up over the top here. Now I'm gonna take this knitting needle and I'm just gonna go through underneath the top center one of that stitch. Now the next thing I wanna do, and this part it can be a little tricky to lay your yarn out, but you wanna take your yarn so that the part attached to the towel goes behind, back behind over towards the left and then comes towards yourself. And now when I go in for the next one, which I'm just gonna go over a little bit from the previous one, probably around a quarter of an inch over. I'm gonna go through both sides and I wanna make sure this needle comes out up above where the strand of yarn is. And now when I pull on this, I'm gonna end up with basically a little bar across the top and then one of these vertical bars. So I have one horizontal bar across the top and vertical bars going up the front and the back. So this vertical, or sorry, this horizontal bar across the top, that's gonna be where we pick up our first stitch. And every time we repeat that, that's gonna be an additional stitch we can cast on. So just to give you an idea of how many stitches to cast on, on this first one, I got 25 stitches all the way across the top, and I did really like how that one turned out. So now again, to show it one more time, I'm gonna lay my yarn down towards the left and then around up towards the front. I'm gonna pick where I'd like to go in this time Go through all the layers, make sure my knitting needle comes out up above where the strand of yarn is. Now I'm just gonna pull on it. So now there's another stitch I can cast on onto that bar. So I'm gonna continue repeating this all the way across this edge and then I'll show you what to do once you get to the other side. But there's another thing I wanted to note too before we go to actually attaching our knit stitches. And that's that as you're going across, you just wanna check inside all the layers and make sure you're picking up all of them. If you aren't quite picking up all of them, then you're just gonna to wanna to rip back a little bit. And by that, you can just take the string off your tapestry needle and just pull the stitches out. And then basically move it down a little bit further so that you get to go through all the layers. I just finished going all the way across that top edge. And now that I've finished, my yarn is coming out the top. So I'm actually just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna cut my yarn so I have about, uh, about a 12 inch tail left over. And later on, I'm gonna use this tail to basically clean up that corner edge. I'm gonna be using my full thing of yarn and also my knitting needle. So again, what I wanna pick up as I go across are these horizontal bars going across the top. So I'm gonna insert my left needle underneath that first one. Now I'm gonna take my right needle point and go into the back of that stitch. Just to start out, I'm gonna wrap a loop of yarn over it. So I just basically have a little tail. And 
and I'm gonna pull my yarn through to knit. Now again, I don't have anything on the left needle, so I'm gonna go across to that next bar, pick it up with my left needle, then go into the back of that stitch with my right needle. I'm gonna wanna knit and just make sure I have my working yarn and not my tail. And now I'm gonna continue going across the top of the tail, picking up each bar with my left needle, and then knitting into the back of that stitch. So I've just finished going across that first row and picking up each one of those stitches and knitting into it. And now I have a total of 25 stitches on my knitting needle. And another thing I want to note is basically which side is the front of my work. So this side I'm going to call the front, which is the side I just went across and picked up each of the stitches on. So for me it's just going to be marked by this little plastic thing, whereas the wrong side of my work has the big plastic hook. So now I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to begin knitting for a full five rows. Now I have found it looks a little bit cleaner if I slip the first stitch on each row purl-wise. So basically how I do that is I just bring my um, working yarn to the front, slip the first stitch as if to purl, and then bring my working yarn in between the needles to the back of my work, and now I continue knitting across. Another thing I found is that I like the way it looks a little bit more if I knit into the back of each loop, just because I think it, um, it basically just makes it a little bit tighter of a knit for me. So I like the way it looks in this case. So I'm going to continue doing each one of those steps for each row for a total of five rows. I've now finished those five rows and I'm back on the front side of my work. So now I'm going to begin a set of decrease rows. To do the decrease rows, I'm again going to slip the first stitch purlwise and bring my yarn to the back. Now I'm going to do a slip slip knit. So I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the second stitch as if to knit, slide them both back over to my left needle, then take my right needle through the back of both stitches and knit them together. So we just took those two stitches and turned them into one. Now I'm going to knit across. Again, all these regular knit stitches, I'm going through the back of each loop until I have three stitches remaining. Now that I have three stitches remaining, I'm going to do a knit two together. So I'm going to go through two stitches as if to knit. Then I'm just going to pull my yarn through and slide both the loops off my left needle. So again, I've gone from two stitches down to one stitch. And then finally, I'm going to knit that final stitch. So that's what that's going to be the row on the front side of my work. Now I'm going to turn my work and on the wrong side, I'm just going to do my regular row where I just slip the first stitch purlwise, bring my yarn to the back, and then knit into the back of each stitch. Now I'm going to continue doing one decrease row and then one regular row decrease on the front side of my work, regular row on the wrong side of my work, until I have a total of 11 stitches on my needles. I've just finished decreasing down to those 11 stitches, and now I want to continue just working those 11 stitches until my piece measures five and a half inches from basically the top of the towel or the bottom of the knit stitches up until the base of the knitting needle. So just like the bottom of the knitting needle. Once I do that, I'll be ready to add in the opening for the button. I finished doing those five and a half inches and now I can kind of test to see how large it'll be when I fold it over. So if I think about the button going probably right about there and then the buttonhole going right in the center. Um, so that's how much room I'll have when I fold it over. So if you wanted it any longer, um, you could always add more or any shorter, you could take off some of those rows. So now I'm going to add the button hole in the center of this row. So again, first I'm going to slide the first stitch purlwise, 
bring my yarn to the back. Now I'm going to knit two. And now I want to cast off the next five stitches. So to cast off, I'm going to knit one stitch, then knit the second stitch. So basically now I've knit five stitches in. I want to pass the previous stitch up, over, and off. I'm going to knit a new stitch, pass the new previous stitch, or like the second stitch in. I'm going to take that one up, over, and off. And I'm going to continue that until I've cast off a total of five stitches. And when I reach five stitches, I should basically have one stitch on my right needle, the beginning three over here as well, so four stitches total on my right needle, and then two stitches on my left needle. Now I'm just going to finish off working this row. I'm going to turn my work. Again, slip that first stitch purlwise. I'm going to knit two. And again, just throughout this whole pattern, I'm just knitting through the back loop instead. Now I want to cast on five stitches. So I'm actually just going to move this left needle to the side for a second, just so that they don't fall off. And now I want to lay my working yarn over my left hand. So basically coming out over the top is closest to the work. And then the actual ball of yarn is coming out underneath. I want to grab it with my bottom three fingers. And now I want to take my pointer finger underneath a strand of yarn towards myself, up over the top, and then back behind. So now basically I have kind of like one full loop and a half loop wrapped around my pointer finger. I'm going to take my knitting needle, slide it right underneath that one loop, and slide it onto my needle. So that's like I just cast on one stitch. Now I'm going to repeat that again. So again I'm just grabbing onto my yarn. Pointer finger is going to go below the strand towards myself, up over the top, and then behind. And now I'm going to take my knitting needle and slide it underneath that stitch. I have a second one cast on. So I'm going to do a total of five. Now I'm just going to re-pick up that left needle and continue knitting across the rest of that row. Again, I'm going to turn my work. Now I'm going to knit two full rows, just regular, where I slip the first stitch, knit across, and then on the opposite side, I'm going to slip the first stitch and knit across. Now for my final two rows of work, I'm going to do two decrease rows. So I'm going to slip my first stitch, do a slip slip knit, Knit all the way across until three stitches remain. Knit two together. Knit the final stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work and do the exact same decrease row on the wrong side of my work. Now I just have to cast off. So to cast off, I'm going to slip that first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front, bring the yarn to the back, knit one stitch, now pass the previous stitch up, over, and off, knit the next stitch on the left needle, pass the previous stitch on the right needle up, over, and off, and continue repeating that cast off all the way across this edge. Once I have that final stitch remaining, I just pull on it and then take my full ball of yarn right through that loop to make a little knot there at the end. I'm going to break my yarn, leaving about an 8 inch tail to weave in. 
The final thing I have to do is weave in my ends. So first I'm gonna cut out this plastic and now I found one trick that's really helpful in making these is that instead of having all my ends basically end up in the center part of the towel right here, I actually like to weave them in so that they end up kind of more within these different layers because then people are much less likely to ever see them. So just starting off with basically the two sides, I have this original knot, which is where I started, and then I have over here, which is where I finished sewing, down to the towel. So I'll just start off over here with this original knot. So I'm going to first thread my tapestry needle. And now, basically what I want to do is I want to close up this gap in between the side of the towel and the side of the knitting, because you can see how it kind of goes in and then up. And it does the same thing on the other side where you can see the edge of the towel, it goes in and up. I just like to close those up. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to thread it directly up. And now I'm going to go into the side of one of these stitches. And now I can thread it back down again. And here is where I'm only going to bring it down into one layer. So if I find my tapestry needle, it'll be all the way in here. And the nice thing about this is now you can just tie a knot all the way in here and you don't have to actually worry about weaving in the end. So I'll come back to that one later. Now I'm going to do the opposite side. And here, I basically want to have my yarn come up out over here. So I'm just going to take this strand and go underneath for a little bit of the towel. Come back out again. And now I'm going to pick up probably one or two of these strands right here and just pull it so that it moves over a little bit and then I'll go back in again on the back side of the towel. And again I can just tie a knot and then cut that end. The last thing I have to do is just weave in these two ends that I have remaining. So basically where I join my knitting and then also where I cast off. And I also have to sew on my button. So I'm going to sew on my button basically so that it lines up with this bottom edge right here because that way I get the most room when I'm folding it over. There's basically the most space up here. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.